This was one of the most incredible places I've ever camped. About four months ago, I received a tip off about an amazing camping location on a thin spit of land near a freshwater lagoon filled with wildlife. But there was just one problem because it was nearly impossible to get to by land. So the solution, my first ever paddleboard camping trip. Safety first, kids. We are down at, where are we, Tomb? <laughs> we're at the Tomb Canal, and we're about to get on the river van and head up to the entrance to Loch Beg. Thank you, Gavin. This is Gavin, I'll introduce him in a second. Come up here and I'll show you my board, and then we'll go down and we'll see what Gavin's doing. So I'll see Gavin down there in a second. So, so this is the compact 12 foot board. This is quite an innovative new design. As you can see, the bag that this comes in folds down really small and they're a lot more lightweight than, uh, than other full-size paddle boards. But this one has spe specifically been designed for touring. We've got the 40 liter waterproof red pack on the back here. My gadget box in the middle, tripod is even on here and I've got this deck bag. I love the deck bag because when I'm on the board, if I want to get at my camera, I just fold that down and keep my drone in here. Then my other camera, I keep it in here. So the deck bag is really, really useful. So that's my board, I'll go down and uh, I'll introduce you to Gavin. Gavin Knox owns Good To Go Paddle Boarding and I always say to anyone if you want to start paddle boarding for the first time, the best thing you can do, go and learn from professional. Don't just buy a board and immediately head out. Go and try it, see if you actually enjoy it and learn the safety side of things too because Gavin has already been on the phone with the Coast Guard, not because we've already had an accident, um, but just to let them know that we're going out, we're going to be away overnight. Um, so yeah, he knows what he's talking about. Gavin, your top safety tips for paddle boarding. Me personally, every time I think about going paddle boarding, it's going to be plan, prepare, and then paddle. Simple. Um, notifying the Coast Guard is a great thing to do. Make sure you've got skin protection with you in hot weather. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Something else is great to have with you at all times, obviously, is a PFD. And they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. We have Red's new paddle boarding, classic. But they also do the PFD belt, which is awesome in hot weather. And yeah, get out there and enjoy yourselves, folks. Right. Gavin is on this. This is the 12 foot 6. Uh, red Voyager board, more kind of traditional standard type of long distance touring board. It's a good bit thicker than the one I'm on. It's also heavier, um, but it's more sort of designed for long distance and also carrying luggage. He's got quite a bit more storage space than I have, but I've still got everything I need, so I don't feel hard done by. No. Right, we've got two miles to go up this river, so uh, we'll get in the water. It's a warm enough day. I think if I did go in, I would dry off. Wow. 
is an eel fishery and interestingly Northern Ireland exports massive numbers of eels like massive numbers of eels I think they mostly go to London nobody here eats them <laughs> have you ever eaten an eel? never 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 <laughs> never eaten an eel I've never no one here eats them and yet we, we like export tons of them every year now for perhaps the most stupid part of this adventure I'm trying to fly a drone from the back of a paddle board. Oh, if I tip this board right now, there's a lot of equipment that will go straight to the bottom. <laughs> Look at that house. Imagine you lived over there. Gavin, how long have you been on the water or in the water stuff? Forever. Since my dad or since my mother washed me on a, in a basin <laughs> the kitchen sink. That's really where that started. But um, my passion, being passionate about being around the water, started when I was living in an arm, learning to surf in terrible conditions. I remember coming off the sea, I used to work for a fish farm and uh, yeah, too rough you'd be stormed off for the day so i would come home straight under a wetsuit straight over the garden wall into the river and down to the sea again for <laughs> surf so yeah i've just been i've loved it my whole life loved it what do you think it is about water because i haven't done that much water so i mean i find it it's it's it, it can be really peaceful but it can also be a little bit scary at times you can be very comfortable you can be very cold like what what the best thing about water for me is it doesn't ask you for permission to be who it is or what it is. So if you if you approach approach this without thinking about it, that's when things can go wrong. Even on a lovely night like tonight, it still go wrong. Um, but the thing about water for me is it, it's all its different characteristics. You mentioned it yourself there. So it, the sea definitely holds something very unique and special. But so too then does inland waterways. And my experience of it would be I would say there's a lot more peace to be had. On the inland waterways, the sea very rarely looks like what we have as around us right now. Largely, it's, it's, it's kind of like a hidden gem, I feel, because it's the same waterway it was in England, Scotland, or Wales. Mm -hmm. It would be saturated. The people? With people, paddle boards, pleasure craft, kayaks, canoes, paddle boards. But sadly, it's taken for something like COVID to open up yeah. the eyes again to the outdoor activities that are available to us. Yeah. Whenever that second lockdown finished, the water became the go-to and paddleboarding yeah. and kayak and things sports like that were very were perfect because you're able to get out exercise remain socially distanced get healthy saturate your mind with nothing but beauty you know and and after all the time that we spent stuck in the box it was uh yeah kind of like the perfect it was release the perfect recipe yeah for for the outdoors to receive us all back outside again uh, whenever they're elderly you know they'll be looking back and saying well whenever i was not a child, but whenever I was 40, 50, 60, I remember getting back outdoors. A lot of people go outdoors, but they go outdoors overseas. Yeah. They go outdoors via an airplane. That's right. Yeah, it's like, I want to go I want to go outdoors and experience outdoors, right? I'll go book some flights to somewhere. Bye. And the pandemic basically forced us to go and enjoy what's around us. <coughs> That's right. Which is very poetic, but um, I have I have um, a little invention. I say a little invention, it's not an invention at all. That I want to try to get some drone shots along here. I'm going to try leashing my board to your board and then you can tow me while I fly the draw. So here it is. Right. Hey, there we go. <laughs> right, I'm going to get the drone up now. Yeah, yeah, if you can stand, stand away. I'm still far, um, four feet away. Alright.
perfect spot for a quiet, peaceful camp with no noise, nothing disturbing you, not, no kinds of loud distractions or anything like that. Apart from that. <laughs> Gavin looks like he's going on safari with that hat. <laughs> Hold on, are you wearing are you wearing double hat? I'm wearing two hats. You've got, let's see. That's my sun cream layer. And my <laughs> sun layer. <laughs> what do you see much stuff I got in here? Got a board? <laughs> no, shopping board. A walnut. And the bottom of this is this handy change mat, mm -hmm. which I can use for putting my essential camping items on. Mm. Or for some Here we go. Got the, the, the onions are caramelized and saute in there. Look at this campsite all set up. Glorious sunshine. Our plan, once we get some food, I think we're going to. Go out for a paddle, go out in the water for sunset, and then you just stand in there with an axe. <laughs> I'm trying to chop midges from the you air. Try to, chop. <laughs> try, to, try to chop midges from the air. Does that work? I, no. <sighs> okay, so in the time that it's taken uh, Gavin to pitch his entire campsite, um, I've only just managed to, sp to spread out all my, um, what I'm calling my paddleboard camping essentials, and I'll run through them in a second, but first just a caveat, this is the first time I've gone paddleboard camping and this is sort of based on my experience doing normal camping and a little bit of paddleboarding so there may be some things I'm missing out so if you've got more experience in paddleboard camping and you think some of my suggestions are idiotic I'd like to know and so would the rest of us so let's go in and I'm going to start with um, well obviously you've got the paddleboard that's a given you need that but then a few things that are maybe specific to paddleboarding that you really wouldn't carry on every other paddle and of course you've got your your pfd now i'm mentioning this again because this is actually useful other than just being on the paddle board because a pfd is essentially a really thick gilet so you can stick this on in the evening as an extra warm layer and as gavin suggested you can also use it as a maybe a pillow as a pillow don't compress it too much though as you saw from gavin's board you don't need to buy extra luggage bags you just use whatever you have and you can bungee them on but it can be a bit more organized if you have something more designed for it. And I've got two bags here. I'll show you. I've got this. This is my favorite bag for paddle boarding. I use this, you know, even when I'm not camping. This is Red's deck bag, and it's designed to sit right on top of the board. It's got clips where it clips onto the board, so you don't need to put bungees over the top of it. And then you've got free access to these top bungees. You can put water bottles in the side. In the top here, when it's on the deck, it sits flat so you can get access to your stuff without it being squashed. It's really easy to find everything. So I've been using this to carry my drone, a few extra layers, um, and I think some of my food was in there. And the other bag I have is this. This is a 40 liter waterproof bag. Um, you don't have to use this for paddle boarding because it's got straps on it, so you can actually wear it like a backpack. It's got one big central chamber you can just sort of dump everything into as well as a big side pocket as well. And then on the bottom of it, I don't know what this is for, but there is like an, another pocket, flat pocket on the very, very bottom where you keep, I don't know, your newspaper <laughs> or something. Do you read newspapers? Never. See, even Gavin doesn't, and he's older than me. <laughs> While it is a bit of extra bulk to carry, it's a good idea to bring your pump with you. Emergency spare paddle. That opens up and then it basically gives you a really short paddle. This is pretty lightweight, ultra light tint. This one weighs a kilo. This is a Terra Nova laser compact one. Sleeping mat, inflatable sleeping mat, pillow. I haven't brought a sleeping bag because I want to try something. And this is what I've brought instead. Changing robe, which is basically almost like a sleeping bag you can wear. It's like fleece lined, it's waterproof. So it means I can use it in the evening as my warm layer. If it starts to rain, I've got a rain jacket and I'm pretty sure this thing is warm enough to sleep in. 
I'm gonna try, I'm gonna flip it upside down, put my feet inside the hood. Change robe for sleeping in, and then just in case I get a bit chilly or my feet stick out, I've got this. This is like a really tiny silk liner. It's gonna be maybe down to nine degrees Celsius tonight. So just in case it's a little bit cold, I can get inside the silk liner. For cooking, this is my little stove that I have. This is a jet boil stash. Really, really handy. Everything goes in here. You got the gas, and then inside the pot here, you've got your pot stand, and you've got your your stove burners in there. You'll see this. You'll see the stove working later. Now, I do also have a frying pan with me, but I don't think that's an essential piece of kit, so I'm not going to show you. Container with some food in it. I got some paninis. Water is really important. If you're paddleboarding, you're on water. But you can't necessarily drink it, and. I have water filters that I use in the mountains. They're, they're sort of like bunched fiber based water filters. You see them around a lot, those like soft flasks, like Be Free make one, Salomon make one. And they're great if you're drinking from a relatively trustworthy water source because they'll remove like all the biological contaminants, they'll remove viruses, bacteria, that kind of stuff. But they won't remove chemicals or heavy metals. And this, that being the River Ban, that being Loch Beg. There are boats going past here, there are farms with runoff. So I've got this. This is a Grail Ultra Press. And to use it, you just, well, you just dunk that into the water, fill it to this line, put this top bit in, press it down, and that gives you, I think that one's like 500, 500, 700 mils of water. That way you've got delicious fresh water and zero diarrhea. Hey there. I hate diarrhea. Yeah. Yeah, diarrhea is awful. <laughs> And then for the evening, I've got a few extra warm layers just in case it gets really cold. One small thing, you might not think this is essential, but I think this is essential to enjoy a camp, is a small seat. This thing weighs 250 grams. It's absolutely, look at it. And it's just enough. It's just enough. That's the first time I've sat down hours. It's just enough to get you off the ground. That, that actually feels so much more comfortable than in. It gets you off the ground. Handy little seat, can come in useful. And also this one has a particular advantage in that if you put it inside your tent afterwards, it becomes a tiny table on which you can put small objects such as pebbles that you might collect or your phone. <laughs> gadget table now. People like small camping gadgets. Well, this isn't a gadget. This is a microfiber towel because you never know, you might fall in, you might get wet. Something might get wet that you don't want to get wet and you dry it off. This is useful to have. Head torch, always bring a head torch. A midge net. Actually, very few midges around here. There are lots of flies, but they're not biting us, which is great. But if they were, we'd be having a miserable time, and they might still appear. Midges tend to appear after the drag sun has gone, so we'll find out later. Got a first aid kit. Always customize your first aid kit with any like specific medications you might need. So I've got some extra paracetamol in here, ibuprofen, but I've also added antihistamines because I've got a hay fever, dust allergy, which might be set off, so I've got some of those in there. I'm also allergic to wasps, so uh, not really allergic, but slightly allergic. So if a wasp stung me, antihistamine, and I'm not gonna go crazy, crazy, swelly, swelly. You may or may not want to get one of these, but this is a Zolio. This is a satellite communicator, um, a sort of emergency beacon. And what this lets me do is this lets me send text messages if I don't have signal. There's this little SOS button. I can flick that switch, push that, press that, and that will send a beacon, which will just continually run until the emergency services sort of come to my location. This is just a tube that contains some repair tape in case I burst something inflatable. I've got a put bag, which contains some toilet roll, a shovel, and some alcohol hand gel. Hopefully don't have to use this. And I've got some insect repellent just in case some bugs do turn up. I got some chewing gum because I forgot to bring a toothbrush. And I've got a lamp sip because um, if my hay fever gets set off, I'll wake up in the morning all gunked up. I find, have a nice warm lamp sip, it clears you out. It's great. Yes, I've got a head torch, but there's something nice about just turning on a little lamp and hanging it up inside your tent. It also means you can walk away from your tent with your head torch and you can find where your tent is because it's now glowing in the dark. My last essential item is this. This is a eye mask and there's also a pair of earplugs in there because this time of year, the sun is gonna rise very, very early. And if you're not wanting to get up at sunset and you don't have anything dark over your eyes, you're probably gonna wake up. At least I'll wake up. Right, it's half eight. You hungry? Sure, always. Okay, I think it's time to eat. It's not right for this particular type of race because they're all just dispensed. Right, for so long. Feeling and more oil. This. Do you mind if your onions are slightly crunchy? No. All right, the onions are done. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
I'm just fixing up the skies now to see the angle of the cooling off. Oh, yes. Here you go. Oh, awesome. Cheers. Oh. oh, come on. Hopefully this won't jump cut to Gavin running off being sick somewhere. <laughs> Yeah, there's an onion stuck to my GoPro. <laughs> right, I'm not gonna time to get my tent pitched before sunset. We're gonna get out in the water. I'll get out there, see this, right. Let's go. See you the sunset. Here comes the sun. Oh wow. Look at that. Well, that was pretty special. You, you looked like you were in the end credits of a movie, just sort of, yeah. the, her the hero paddles off <laughs> into the sunset. It looks like we're in a semi-submerged garden. It's, it's like islands of grass. I was here doing my first recce back, when did we come here? March? March, yeah. March. None of this, none of that grass was there. This was just completely open water. It's a completely different place now. Yeah. It's really special and look, there's a full moon tonight as well. It's pretty cool. Right, head back and I'll try and get my tent set up before it gets completely dark. Look at that light. That is incredible. I can honestly say I've never camped anywhere quite like this. So yeah, thank. Yeah, this this wouldn't be possible if not for the paddle boards, and also for Gavin's expertise and tell me where to find this the spot. We wrecked this back in March. Been planning yeah. this since March. That That's is what I love about it most. a class camp spot, right? I think we're gonna go get this little stove on. We get a little small safe fire off the ground, just to point out. There'll be zero trace in the morning. And uh, sit and uh, do what you always do when you're camping and solve the problems of the world. <laughs> and then uh, we'll see you in the morning. That's quite nice. It's not fair about heat, haven't we?
Oh, that's hot. It seems to be absolutely no signs of life from Gavin yet, so uh, <laughs> I'll not, I'll not, uh, I'll not wake him up just yet because it'll take me much longer to get back. Ta-da! Sun's come out. We're all packed up. Gavin eventually woke up. Uh, got all our stuff set up, ready, ready to go. Gavin, what do you think of uh, paddleboard camping? Oh, I love it. I love it. We got a gastric issues last night. <laughs> yeah, Gavin had horrendous hiccups last night, and I only realised this morning that what I thought was sort of some exotic birds in the background. Every now and then I can hear. It was him, it was him hiccuping. Right, that's us, we're gonna get out in the water, back up the river, I really enjoyed this. Definitely want to do more paddleboard camping adventures, you can let me know if you enjoyed it. And uh, thanks once again to Red for sponsoring this, this video, they've been great to work with. They basically said, do you wanna do some videos with us? And I said, yes and give some suggestions and they were like okay let's go for it they very little input so they've been great to, great to work with it's always good as a uh, sort of as a creative person when people just let you do your thing and don't uh, don't try and tell you what to do so yeah thanks to red thanks for watching and maybe someday i'll catch you out in the middle of a lock in beautiful weather being watched by some cows bye bye